I've been spending a lot of time on Quora lately, and this is a question that keeps coming up over and over again. People are asking if they should learn React or Vue. I think that you should learn both of them because they're both awesome, they're both a lot of fun, and I also think that um, they both have different strengths and weaknesses. Personally, I'll go with Vue.js if I want to build something out quick, if I'm building an MVP and time is of the essence. I think React can be a little bit more fun if I'm building something more complicated and I want more sort of fine-tuned uh, fine controls over the, the DOM. Um, I mean, it really depends what you're doing, but I have a gut instinct for which framework, or I guess people would say library, that I want to use in both of these instances. So what I've done is I've bootstrapped a Vue.js app and a React app, both with Vite, because Vite is awesome. So I'm going to build the same application with both of them. This isn't going to be a tutorial. I'll talk through what I'm doing as I do it. But if you don't know JavaScript and HTML and CSS already, you might be a little bit lost here. But the goal is to show you what both of these frameworks feel like to use so that you can decide where you want to start. My advice would be to start with Vue.js because Vue is essentially just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Whereas React has JSX, which adds an added level of complication. So I had trouble learning React originally, but then after I learned Vue, it was a piece of cake to pick up React because you get familiar with the component-based architecture. I'm also using a classless CSS library. So if you just do a Google search for classless CSS, I want to say classless CSS. The first one up here is a GitHub repo with all of these themes that you can just paste with a CDN into the head tag of your HTML. And it gives you some nice styles. The one I'm using for this example is called Sakura. There's no reason in particular. I just thought it looked sort of nice. So let's go ahead and get started. We have our React app down here. We'll get to that in a minute, but we're going to start with Vue.js. And what I did is I just deleted all the code out of app.view, and there was a hello world component here that I deleted. Um, I had already also pasted the, the CDN, the styles for it right here. So we'll have some default styling, which should look nice. I have an extension installed with view snippets. I believe it was made by Sarah Drasner. So that allows me to do things like this. I'll say vbase, and then let's just pick vbase CSS. Um, it just sort of bootstraps the template for you. Now, keep in mind, this isn't important, but if you're using Vue 3, it's become a convention to have your script up at the top. But I'm going to do it like this just because that's how most of the apps that I work on are actually built. So my, I guess like my muscle memory, the way I traverse this, um, you know, the text editor here, it just feels a little bit more natural for me to do it this way. What I like to do with all of my Vue.js components is I like to give it a name. And I like for the name to match the name of the component exactly. So we're going to call this app. I don't put the file extension in there. I don't think you should. Um, now keep in mind, there's two ways to write Vue.js. There's the composition API and there's the options API. I'm building this with the options API. Personally, I love the options API. I think it's what makes Vue so much fun to use. If I'm going to use the composition API, I'm just going to use React. I think React feels like a more intuitive way to use that same type of style, more or less. And that's a huge generalization, but that's how I personally feel about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a to-do list application. So let's go ahead and start by, we need a data object here. And again, because I have the snippets, I can just do vData. And when we think what state do we need our component to have, it's going to need an array that's going to be our tasks. We'll call it uh, to-dos. And we'll just give it the value of an empty array. And then we're going to have an empty string that's going to be our new task that we're adding. So let's say new task. And we'll just make that an empty string. You could also make it null. But for the sake of avoiding any complications associated with types for this particular demonstration, I'm just going to leave it as an empty string. So let's give our to-dos some values here. Instead of making them strings, I'm going to make them objects because we're going to want to have a status, an ID, and a task name. So let's say ID is going to be 1. Then we'll have task, and we'll say something like buy groceries. And then we'll say completed, and we'll give it a value of false. 
Now let's add another task here. And I spelled false wrong, didn't I? There we go. Uh, let's add another object and we'll say mow lawn. And we want this to be true just so we can more quickly see if our styling is working correctly. We'll give this an ID of two. All right, so let's go ahead and render that real quick. Let's make an unordered list with a list item. And now we're gonna add a directive called v4. As a matter of fact, before we do that, let's just throw our to-dos in here and take a look at it. All right, so if we take a look at it right now, you can see that we have our array with the objects. We want to iterate over these. So we're gonna say v4 equals, we'll say to do in to do's. And now you see we still have the red line. Um, the reason for that is we need to give it a key. So you might do something like this. You might say key equals um, to do dot ID. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the reason that I prefer doing it this way, I like to add an index and then I'll make the key the index. Let's say that you're just using an array full of strings. Maybe these strings are names and you have two people both named John Smith. That's going to cause a problem for you. Now, if you have unique identifiers, it's not a problem, but I think this is a good practice to get into just because it ensures that you're not going to have an index collision uh, your, or your, your application is always going to know which item to render in which place. So I think that's a good way to go about it. Uh, now, we don't want to render, render all the to-dos here. We just want to render this individual to-do. So let's take a look and see how it looks. Perfect. We get the objects, but they're iterating in, in a list. Now, we only actually want the task name to show up. So let's change this from to-do to to-do.task. So now if we're adding a new task, we're going to need an input. So let's go ahead and add an input and we're going to bind the value. We're actually gonna do two-way data binding, so that would be V model. And we want to bind it to this new task object right here, or the new task string, I should say. So new task. And then just to make sure it's working, let's throw in our templating up here. Let's throw this new task. And let's type something in here. Perfect, it's um, the two-way data binding is working. So now that we have that, let's delete it. And let's add our methods. And again, I'm gonna do V method just like that. And let's add a method for add task. The way that we want this to work is we want to push the new task into the to do's. So we'll say this dot to do's dot push new task. Although this is going to be a problem. We can't just push this dot new task in here because this is a string and these are objects. So what we could do is we could actually make the object right here, but for the sake of readability, let's do it like this. We'll say new task, and we'll make that a constant. That's going to be equal to ID, and then we also have task, and we have completed. Now completed is always going to be false by default, and the task name is going to be this.newTask. And then the ID, this isn't a great way to go about it, but for the sake of the demonstration, let's just make the ID, we'll say this dot to do's dot length plus one. And then we can just push this object in there. All right, so let's take a look. If we type something in here and we actually, we need a button so we can actually call this, this add task method. So let's put a button right here. And instead of doing V on click, I'm just gonna say at click. It does the exact same thing, it's just the shorthand. We're gonna do add, what do we call it? Add task. And the button is going to say add task. So let's take a look at that. Add task, perfect. But we still have the value here so we can keep adding it. Likewise, if we put nothing here, it adds empty tasks. We don't want either of those things. So at the top of our method here, we're going to say if this dot new task, and we want to see if it has a falsy value, uh, and we're going to return. So if there is no new task or if the string is empty, 
it's not going to call the rest of this. And at the end of it, we want to set the new task to be an empty string again. All right, so let's take a look. Perfect, everything's working exactly how we would like. So now the next thing we want to do is let's make it so when we click on a task, we want it to have a strike through it. So let's add a style here and we'll call it complete. And what we'll do is we'll say text decoration line through, just like that. So if it's completed, we want a line, uh, we want to have a strike going through it. So let's go ahead and add this class here. But we want it to be conditional. So we'll say complete, but we only want it to be called under a certain circumstance. So what we can do is we can turn this into a variable by binding it. And now we need to actually turn this into a string, but this allows us to add some logic. So I'll say to do dot completed and then we'll use the double and uh, logical operator. So basically we're gonna add this complete class, but only if the task is completed. So let's take a look. And now we have a strike going through Molon. And let's also do this. We want our list item, when we hover over it, we want it to give us a pointer so that people know they can click on it. So let's just make that, we'll, we'll assign this to all list items because we only have one area where we're using it. Um, and we'll say cursor, I can't spell this morning, cursor pointer. So let's take a look and there we go. We have the pointer when we hover over it. So now when we click on a list item, let's give this a, a click value and we'll say that we want to toggle complete. So we need to add a method now for toggle complete. And we need to pass in an index here. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll pass in this index that we called. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this dot tasks at index I dot completed is going to be equal to the opposite of itself. So let's try clicking on this and see if it works. And it didn't. Let me see what I did wrong here. So we have this.tasks at index i dot completed. Okay, that's what we named it. Equals the opposite of itself. All right, so maybe I have a typo here. Let me take a look at what the issue is. So good for you if you caught the error here, but this array is called to do's, not tasks. So that's what the issue is. So let's just rename that. And now we should be good. There we go. So everything's working as expected right now. Now we also might want to delete a task. So in order to delete a task, let's just do the same thing we did with toggle complete here. Uh, we'll call this delete task but we want that I index, which is why I copied it instead. So now we're gonna say this.todos.splice and we wanna start at index I and we want to remove one value. So in order to delete the task, let's go ahead and add a button in here at the end. And for this button, we're going to want to, we'll give it a trash icon. Oh, no, let's give it a red X. Let's do that instead. All right. And when we click on it, we want it to call delete task. And we're going to have to specify the index. So let's take a look at that. It looks a little bit goofy and we could definitely fix that. But if we click on it, it looks like it's doing what it's supposed to do. So let's just kind of stress test it a bit. Perfect, everything's working as expected. Um, this input, maybe this should be a little bit longer. Uh, so let's say style, just do it in line for the sake of time. Width equals 100%. And 
now the button is down here, which I don't absolutely love. Uh, let's actually, and I would never do this in production. Let's actually just do this. We'll give the button 30% and we'll give the input 70%. This is a, a very stupid solution, but it works for the sake of this demonstration. All right, so one more thing I'd like to do is I'd really like to be able to press enter to add a task. So what we can do is we can wrap this in a form. And um, what I want to do is we'll say on submit. And what we can do is we can add the prevent default uh, right in line here as a directive. So when we submit the form, what do we want to do? We want to add the task. And um, another thing that we should probably do now is we could change this button to, um, you know, I, I rarely do it this way, so I'm reaching deep into my memory here, but we want to do uh, submit. So let me just, let me refresh my memory on what that directive is. So in this instance, it would actually be the same as regular HTML, but we actually don't even need to specify it. Um, the HTML is smart enough to know what we're trying to do here, so no further action is actually required in this instance. What I do want to do, however, is we don't want this straight through style to, you can see here, it's actually going a little bit further than the end there. So what we're going to do to fix that is let's wrap this task in a span. And then let's take this style right here and let's actually assign that to the task. So now if we take a look, there's a little bit of a problem that we need a bit of a margin here, but that's not a big deal. So let's go ahead and this is one of the cool things about Vue.js is that you can use this array syntax here where we're saying if it's completed, we want the complete style, but now we can add another item to our array and we can specify something that we want everything to have. Keep in mind, you can have as many of these items inside of the array as you want, and you can have conditionals for some of them and not for others. Whatever you wanna do, view handles it beautifully. And you can also do this with objects. I'm not gonna get into that right now, but it's very, very cool. So let's say that we want the, um, the margin on the right side. Uh, let's actually add the style right here. We'll call it to do text and we'll say margin. Now keep in mind that when you're doing CSS, it's gonna go to from the top and then to the right, so clockwise. And if you only have two values, the first one's gonna be the, um, the Y value, the second one's gonna be the X value. So what we'll do here is we'll say that we want the margin to be zero for Y. And then we'll say that we want it to be Let's try 2REM for X. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, we actually need to apply the style. I have a feeling it's going to look a little bit funny, but that's okay. And we're going to put that right here. Okay, so we have a little bit of a space on the left side. It's not the end of the world, but let's, let's get rid of that just by adding uh, 0 and 0. That should be better. All right, looks good. Actually, it looks pretty stupid, but it gets the point across. So we have the functionality that we need. We can toggle it and we can get rid of it. So we can press enter. It does the exact same thing. If we wanted, we could even hide this button. We could just set the display to none and just make it so only return is going to add the task. And yeah, why not? Let's, let's go ahead and do that. We'll say display none. We can get rid of this width now and we can actually set this width to 100%. Let's see if that works. All right, so let's just get rid of these default tasks. And let's just, let's give it a title. We'll just say to do's. And let's do one more thing here. We'll say that if there are no to do's, and this is actually a good example of a computed property. So let's add computed properties. And we'll say has tasks. And what we want to do is we want this to return this dot 
this.tasks.length is greater than zero. So this is always going to stay up to date. The value is going to change anytime any of the values that it relies upon changes. So we don't want to say has tasks, we'll just say tasks. Um, okay, so anytime the tasks array changes, this value will also change if it needs to. So let's add some conditional rendering. We'll say v if v if has tasks. So we're saying if it has tasks, we want to render this unordered list. And then we could just set up a span, we'll say, with a directive of v else. And then let's also, well, let's just make it say, please add a task. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So we're having some issues. Let's look at our debugger here. And it can't read length. All right, so it's calling this dot tasks. Okay, we're calling it to do's, that's why. And that should work. So please add a task. Instead of making this a span, even though we're kind of we're kind of done with it at this point, let's make this like an h3. Uh, let's do an h4. We came this far, why not? Please add a task. All right, so we can toggle them, we can get rid of them, and everything is looking nice. Uh, it's having trouble reading completed. And actually, I wanna find out why it's doing this real quick, because offhand, there's nothing that I did that I would imagine would cause this issue. Give me a second while I double check this. What I'm gonna do to prevent this, even though it doesn't really seem to matter, just like we did with this add task, we're gonna do something very similar. So we'll add um, sort of a I forget what the term is for this. It's not a protector. There's some term, but it's eluding me at the moment. So we're gonna say if this.todos, and then we'll add the question mark here because we wanna check the length. But if it's zero, um, I mean, we should still get a length of zero because we're always gonna have an empty array, but why not? Uh, we could do the same thing here. And we're just going to say, that we want it to return. So if the length is zero, or if it doesn't exist, we want it to return instead of trying to call that. Now, something else that we should do here is let's actually add a component. So let's, uh, what do we want to do here? Let's render the list in another component, just so you can truly see what it's like to do some component-based architecture. And we'll call this, uh, we'll call it to-dos, to-dos.view. So let's take a look at what we, or how we're rendering this. We're doing it with this unordered list right here. And then we have this H4 for if there are no values. So let's just go ahead and cut this. Let's go to our to-dos and we'll say vbase CSS. And let's paste this right there. So now we're gonna have to take all of the things from that other one. Let's give it a name first. The name is to do's. So now we're going to need this has tasks computed property. We can just cut all of this out of here and we'll paste it in right here. All right, so we're also going to need our to do's array. So we'll go ahead and take our to do's array. We can cut it out of here. As a matter of fact, what I'd like to do is I'd like to leave the to-dos on the top level. Um, what I'm going to do to handle this instead is we're going to we're going to change how this works a little bit. So we're going to pass in some props. We'll say v props, and now we want our to-dos, and it's going to be an array. And the default is going to be, I think you need, anytime you're using an object or an array, you actually need to do something like this. Um, I believe this is the case at least. We wanted to just return an empty array. So let's see, let's see if that works. The way that we're gonna pass this 
to do's array into the application is we're going to add the component right here. And as you can see, it automatically, it auto imported this to do's component, which is fine. Normally we would have to type that in manually. The other thing is we have this components object down here. Anytime you import a component, you need to register it just like how we have our methods, our computed properties, our data. We have components, and this is where you uh, render the com or this is where you uh, specify that you want that component to be available in your template. So we also need to take these classes here. So which classes are we using? We're using to do text, and it looks like that's it. So let's just take this to do text. And we're also going to need complete, although I skipped right past that. And actually, all of these styles, all of these are for the list. So let's just cut all of these styles and paste them all into this list here. So let's take a look at what we have. OK, so something isn't working here. And I'm sure that's because I just haven't completely thought this through yet. Um, so let me just take a moment to look at what we have and get back up to speed here. And good for you if you caught this bug before I did, because this is a very stupid bug. We're not actually passing our to-dos into the component. We can also make this self-closing like that, so we don't need both of them. You might want to use both of them, uh, you know, the start tag and the end tag, if you wanted to add a slot. So you could put, for example, a slot in here. And we can make that self-closing. And now if we added some text or a component or variable templating, anything like that, you can see it actually does show up there. But it shouldn't show up if we get rid of this slot. So you see how that doesn't show up anymore? That's something good to know, but we're not going to use it for this particular application right now. So we're going to make this to-dos self-closing. But now we need to pass in a value. So we're going to pass in the to-dos. All right, so let's see if that worked for us. And it looks like it did. And let's see if everything is still working. So now we have an error. We can't toggle complete. So let's take a look at toggle complete. And since this method takes place on the list, same with the delete task method, we're going to move both of these to to-dos instead. All right, and let's see if that handles everything or if we get some errors. Can we toggle it? Yes, we can. Can we delete them? Yes, we can. All right, so we are all set with this. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing in React. Um, it didn't matter that I didn't save this just now because even though it technically still had the methods on it, it's just it's not a big deal because we still had them where we needed them. But obviously, we don't want them here if they're not actually doing something. So. Now it's technically complete. So what I'm going to do with the React app is I'm just going to steal some of the styling and maybe even a method or two to make it a little bit um, faster. But let's go ahead and get started with the React app. So let's uh, take a look. Here it is down here. Um, what I did was I deleted a lot of stuff that we don't need. So we have this index.css, which just has um, it has some formatting. We can get rid of this code because we're not going to use the code tag in here. But let's also get rid of the margin. But we could leave the font how it is. Or let's just get rid of that entirely since we're using a classless CSS framework. As you can see in this index. I'm sorry, in this index.html right here. So we don't want the default stylings. Let's just, we'll leave this index.css. Or let's say maybe we won't leave it, just because we can recreate it if we need it. But we're going to do it a little bit differently. So let's close these. And let's get started with our React app. So we have our main.jsx. And you can see that it's calling our app right here, our app component. So our app component is a JSX file. So let's go ahead and stop the server. And let's. Um, I don't know if I actually installed the dependencies in the React app yet. Doesn't look like it. And I'm going to actually 
npm run dev, let's start the server, and then let's go take a look at what we have here. Uh, it's saying it can't find index.css, and that makes perfect sense because we don't have it anymore. Now it's trying to import logo.svg. Let's take a look at the app. I deleted logo.svg, so let's get rid of that. And we also don't have app.css, so let's get rid of that as well. So now if we take a look, we have another error. So logo is not defined. All right, I that's simply because the React logo would normally be there. There we go. Now we have a little React app right there. Let's go ahead and refresh this. And let's get rid of everything in this component. So JSX is really cool. I really like it. Um, but again, different use cases for different things you want to do. There's some places that I, I like to write JSX. There's other places that I don't like to write JSX. So let's just do this real quick. Um, the way that JSX, JSX works is it's basically, it looks like HTML, but it's really JavaScript under the hood. So let's go ahead and add an H1 and let's say to do's. Now, if we take a look, you can see that we're returning this H1 with the value of to do's in there. So I'm not going to say that JSX is that simple, but you'll, you'll get the hang of it very quickly. So let's see what we need here. Um, we're going to need a list so that we can render our to do's. We're going to need some state for the to do's and the new to do. We're going to need the input, the button, and then we're going to need to be able to toggle everything. So let's go ahead and add some dummy to do's in here. And we'll just copy that right from, oh, I actually deleted them. So we're going to have to recreate them. So we'll say dummy to do's equals, uh, it's going to be an array. And the first object is going to have an ID of one. It's going to have a task of do laundry. And then it's going to have completed, we'll say complete false. We'll have task two and we'll say make dinner. We'll set complete to true. All right, so now let's go ahead and just throw these in here, just like we did with the view app. Let's say, now in view, use templating like this. In React, the way you do your templating is with a single set of curly braces. So we'll say dummy to do's. And let's just give this, um, let's give it a parent element. We'll make it an unordered list, but we won't actually set up our list items yet. Now you need one root component. So right now we have unordered list and H1. This needs to all be wrapped in something. Something cool about React is you can use something called React Fragments. So if you use the empty element like that, this is a React Fragment. You can also do React.Fragment and that will also work, but we would have to import React. And now I believe that should work. Let's see what the error we're getting is. Um, objects not valid is a React child. Okay, so I'll just stringify this. And now you can see it. Um, React, in view, it'll automatically turn your objects or your arrays into sort of like a stringified version by default. But because you never actually do this in production, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. I think it's almost better not to let you do things that don't normally make sense. So no big deal there. But let's take a look at how we would render this. So in React, what we want to do is we're going to create our list item. And let, so let's sort of talk through this here. If we said that we want this to be a single to do, you think about this, how do we actually get the to do's object 
let's get rid of dummy here. Let's change this to to do's. How do we get this to do's object to iterate through itself? Well, the way we're going to do this is we're going to wrap this in curly braces and we're going to use the map method. So we'll say to do's dot map and then we have to give it the name. So we're going to call each individual to do to do. And then we want it to iterate through to do's. We want it to take every single to do and we want it to return the to do. I hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at it. And what's this error that we're getting right now? Objects not valid. Okay, same thing as before. Let's stringify this. Now it should work. There we go. Um, we don't want to actually show the to do object. We want to show the actual to do. So we'll say to do dot to do. Or you can destructure it in here like this, which is more of like a functional style. I really like that. But now you see that we don't have anything. I think it's because we named it task. Yeah. All right, let's take a look. All right, so we have our to do's there. Um, I know that the syntax looks a little bit complicated, but when you break it down, remember this is just JavaScript. So forget about the, the curly braces for a second here. And this should look familiar. Just ignore everything that's commented out for a second. And then we'll make this curly braces. All right, so this right here, this is perfectly valid JavaScript. Now, the, the reason that we don't need the return is because it's treating it like an inline function since we're using parentheses instead of curly braces. So it's going to, by default, it's going to return whatever comes after this. And what did I do here? I commented this out. Get rid of task right there. And we should be good again. Let's just double check this. Let's also get rid of react.fragment. We just, all we need is this empty element here. And each child in the list should have a unique key prop. So just like view, it's actually the exact same thing. Um, let's go ahead and give this a unique key. And we can do the same thing with the index as well. And as a this, I don't like how we're sort of stacking our braces, our curly braces on top of each other here. So I'm going to sort of revert this back to how it was. Okay. I cleaned this up a little bit, um, but as soon as I press save, the auto, um, the formatting is automatically going to put this on multiple lines, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like in line because I feel like it's much easier to read. We have our to-dos and we're mapping them. We're creating a value called task. Let's actually change this to to-do. And you see that the task name is called task. So now we'll make this to-do.task. Okay, so we're creating this to-do item for each individual iteration. And then we're returning a list item with this to-do.task value. So let's, now that you see it in line and it's easier to see what's actually happening there, let's save it and it changes it to multiple lines. Again, it wraps this in parentheses so that we can return multiple lines at once. Let's take a look and see if that worked. We still need to add the key, keep that in mind, but it is still working. So now we're going to add the key. So we'll say key equals I, and it should be just that simple. I'm sorry, that's not where we want to put that. We want to put it on our list item. Okay, let's take a look. This warning should go away. Perfect. So now React is React is a lot of fun, and I think this is where it starts getting interesting. So we're importing React from React, which we don't need to do anymore now because we got rid of React.fragment. We're using this syntax instead. But 
we'll, we'll leave it in there just for the sake of helping you understand what's happening. We're also going to pull in use state. Now, if you've heard of React hooks, this is what it's referring to. What we can do here is we need to create a reactive state. Anytime our to do's list changes, we're going to want the uh, we're going to want it to for one be reactive, but also we want for our template to change every time the value changes. So we're going to create a reactive state, and we're going to do that like this. We're going to say const to do's. So think about it like this. If it was vanilla JavaScript, you might do this. Or in Vue.js, you would even do something similar to this. But what we actually want to do, since we need it to be reactive, we're going to say use state. And we want the default value. Maybe we want it to be this empty array. Or in our case, we want it to be this dummy data here. So we'll call this dummy to do's. Dummy to do's. And that's going to be the default state. Now, anytime you're using use state, it creates a tuple or tuple. And what that looks like is it's an array and we have two values here. So the first one is our actual state. The second one is going to be a function that it's going to create for us, which sets the state. So the way that you do this by convention is you're going to name it the same thing as this, but with the word set in front of it and with camel case. So we'll say set to do's. And so we're going to make it dummy to do's. Now we still have all of this. It has the same name. So let's take a look and see if it's still working. It is. And just as a quick demonstration, let's do this. Let's make a set timeout. And let's give it, um, let's give it uh, 3,000 millis or 2,000 milliseconds. And then we'll say that we want it to set to do's. And the value that we're going to pass into it is going to be, let's just change this a little bit. Again, this is just for the sake of demonstration. But let's uh, change this from do laundry to don't do laundry. And we can change this one to don't make dinner. So after two seconds, it should change the value. So you can see how this works. Let's try that out. We give it two seconds, and there we go, it changed. So all you're doing to set this value is you call set to do's, or set whatever the state name is, and then you pass in the value that you want to change it to, and it changes in a reactive sort of way. So we can get rid of this now. And let's go ahead and add some functionality here. So we're going to need an input, and we're going to need a button. Now let's put the button in here. And as a matter of fact, let's just steal this from app.view because we have this styling in here. And the inline syntax works a little bit differently in React than it does in Vue. So let's paste that in here. And in Vue, you use strings. In React, you're going to use curly braces. And if you're referring to a style, you got to keep in mind that the style is an object. So we actually need double curly braces. And there's something else we're going to have to change here in a second. This, for example, is going to have to be a string. This button right here, we have the display set to none, but let's first just change it to an object. None is going to have to be a string. And we need double curly braces. So um, there's, well, there's a few things that need to be pointed out here. But first, let me just see what the error that we're running into specifically is. So it says JSX expressions need one parent element. And this has a parent element right here. But this right here, we have two different things going on here. So we have our unordered list. And then we also have our title. And then we have this area where we're actually assigning the values. Um, there are going to be some differences between vanilla JavaScript, or I'm sorry, HTML and JSX. And one of them, for example, is you don't use class. You use class name because in JavaScript, class is a reserved keyword. So that's something you need to be mindful of. Um, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to wrap everything in its own individual section. So we'll call this maybe, we'll give it a div, and we'll call it actions. And let's wrap these values. And then I'm just going to 
briefly pause the video and take a look at how I could simplify this for the sake of demonstration. Although there's very clearly something stupid happening right here. And again, this is, it's different in view than it is with React. So this is going to be on click. And it's camel case, of course. But um, we have add task. All of our errors went away. But it's starting to look more like an actual React application now. So let's take a look and see what we have here if we have any issues. Add task is not defined. So our app won't even render. So let's go ahead and add our add task. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to put it above the return statement because the return statement is returning the JSX. So we can put our add task, we'll say const add task equals, and then we need to create the new task. Before we can actually add the task, we're going to need to wire up our input together. Now, this is one of the places where Vue shines over React. And let me show you what I mean by that. In Vue, all we need is this new task with the string, and then we have the two-way data binding, which is pretty cool with that V model. In React, you actually have to build out the logic for this yourself. So let's create another state value here. And we're going to call this new task. Set new task. It's going to equal use state. And we're going to set the default value to a blank string. So now that we have this, we'll set up the, the data modeling or the, um, the two-way data binding. We'll set that up in just a second. But first, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create this task. So what we're going to do here is we'll say const new task equals, and it's going to be an object. The ID is going to be todos.length plus one. Then we're going to have, um, what do we call it before, task? And the task is going to be whatever the new task value is. And then complete is going to be set to false. So let's, um, let's go ahead and press the button here. Or we'll type something in. And it's actually not working. But I forgot that we had this going on. We had this display set to none. Instead, I'm just going to comment this out. And we're going to add the same thing we did before. Width is going to be 30%. And we'll change this to 70%. And this needs to be a string because it's in line. All right, so now we actually have our button. Let's see what our error message tells us when we try adding something. So it can't, it cannot access new task two before initialization, and that's line 15. So new task right there. Um, now this right here, I'm calling new task, but you can see we actually have a conflict in the the way the naming is working. Right here we have new task, and then uh, we're also using new task here, so it's causing a name collision. Instead, let's just call this n. We're just sort of using it. We're using it very briefly. So let's take a look now. OK, so at least we're not getting any errors. But um, now what we have to do is we have to do set new task. And we're going to set that to n. So now let's take a look at this again. OK, so nothing is happening still. Um, there's another hook that we're going to have to talk about in just a second. but. Before we do that, let's uh, add the uh, the guard. I think it's called a guard. We're going to say if new task is equal to, what do we want to say? If new task doesn't exist, we want to return. Otherwise, it's going to create this new task, and it's going to set the new tasks. And I'm sure you noticed, again, I'm rushing through this. I did something stupid. This is actually going to be set to do's. And then we need to add the new task here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that we want it to be the to do's. 
and then we're going to append this new task value onto the end of it. So let's take a look at this. Let's add the task. And you gotta bear with me here because I've been using view for the last several months and I'm sure I'm missing something really stupid. While we're at it, let's just uh, set the new task back to an empty string. So if there is no new task, we want to return. If there is a new task, we're creating an ID, we're creating a task name, and this is actually why it's not working. Um, just for the sake of demonstration, let's add our new task right here. And you'll see exactly what's happening. We don't actually have that new task. It's not doing anything. Now it's because like I mentioned, in Vue, you have vModel. In React, you need to build this out yourself. So on this input, what we're going to do is we're going to say on change. I'm sorry, I'm using the Vue syntax here. So on change, we want to create um, an input handler, we'll call it. Now, the way that this is normally going to work is there's an event that's sent every time it's changed. And then you can take the event.target.value and set that to the new task. So let's take this input handler we just created and let's actually create a function for it. Const input handler equals, and it's going to take e as an argument, which is the event. And we're going to say e.target.value, I think. And we're going to set the new task to that. So let's see if that works. Again, I'm kind of going from memory here. It's been probably a month and a half, two months since I've had to touch React for any reason. But um, let's add this task, this new task here. And what's this? OK, this needs to be a child. No, that doesn't make sense. Bear with me for one second here, guys. All right, so again, I hope you caught this bug before I did. The issue is I'm using the view templating instead of the React templating. I think that's the issue at least. OK, there we go. Now we can see that we actually have the, um, the two-way data binding at this point. So we can get rid of this. As you can see, what happened was I was doing it like this, which turns it into an object, essentially. We're taking new task and we're turning it into new task is equal to new task in the form of an object. That's sort of what we were doing there. So now that we know that it's working, let's try out the, the rest of our functionality. When we add the task, all right, it looks like we have some sort of bug there, but we'll get to that. We'll debug that in just a second. And what you can see that it's doing is it's actually, instead of adding a new list item, it's appending the value. See, it's appending the value. Or not appending, it's replacing the value. So let's take a look at our logic because something here clearly isn't right. So when we click the button, it's calling add task. If we take a look at add task, we're creating a new task, which is n. The task name is new task. So far, so good. Complete is false. And we want to set the we want to set the to-dos, we need the spread operator there. Let's see if that does it for us. There we go. But now it's supposed to also be clearing this out and that doesn't appear to be happening. So we're calling set new task and we're setting it to a blank string. So let me take a look at why this is happening. And again, a stupid mistake because I'm jumping between Vue and React here. I'm using vModel. You can't use vModel in React. That's a Vue directive. So we're actually going to set the value like this. And the value is going to be new task. So we'll see if that does it for us. All right. It looks like everything's working correctly. Now we need to add the button. First, when we click on it, we want to change the styling, right? So the way that that is going to work is where we're rendering the list right here. Let's give this a class. Let's, let's actually just do inline styling. I think it might be easier at this point. We're close to the end. So we'll say style 
equals, and then let's see, what, what do we want this to say? We want the style to be text decoration, but since we're doing inline styles in React, the way that it works is you change it to camel case like this. So we want the text decoration to be line through. There we go. Now this isn't this is a string, so it doesn't matter how it's formatted. Um, in fact, I mean it does matter, but you don't have to change it. The way that we had to with with the name would have been otherwise. Um, so we're gonna set the text decoration to line through. So let's take a look. It looks like that worked, but we want it to be conditional. So let's see if we can just add some inline logic here. If we say to do dot complete. Let's see if that works for us. And it appears to be working. Just like we did before, let's give this a span. And let's take this style right here and assign it to the span. All right. So it looks like that line through isn't exactly working. Let's figure out why that's happening. And it's because the value is outside of my span. So let's move that in there. And there we go. Now we also want to add the cursor. So the style is going to be cursor is going to be pointer. There we go. So it indicates that you can click on it. So now we're going to add the click directive. So on click, we're going to say toggle complete handler. And let's create that toggle complete handler. And just like we did with the previous one, we need to pass in an index. And we're going to say, let's make a copy of the tasks. So we'll say const task. Uh, yeah, okay, let's just make a copy of it. We're gonna say to do's, we'll call it t equals, and we're gonna use a spread operator to create a copy of it. So we have our to do's now, and then we're gonna say t, so our to do's at index i dot complete equals the opposite of itself. So we'll negate this and we're going to have to do set tasks or set to do's. What do we call it? Set to do's. Set to do's needs to be T. Now we need to pass the index in, which is right here. But now what's going to happen is when this renders, it's going to, I actually don't remember for sure if this happens. It might call it right away which might throw an error. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think that's what's happening. So let's do this, but make an inline function there. So it doesn't call it by default, but when you click, then it calls it and it passes in the index. So now we don't have any errors anymore. All right, so far, so good. Now when we click on it, it toggles. That's exactly what wanted to happen. So that's perfect so far. Um, now, what else do we need? We need to add this form element so we can use that enter thing as, like we did before. So we have this div here for the actions. We can just change this to form. And then we could say on submit, we want to call add task. But what we're gonna do here, just like we did in view, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. We're gonna pass in this event object here. So with add task, we're going to add this event and we can say e.prevent default. Because if we don't do that, I'll show you what happens if we don't do that. If I comment that out, you can see it refreshes when we press enter. See the page changes. Look at the look at the URL when I do this. So that's not what we want. But if we add this prevent default, it's going to prevent the default behavior, which is to refresh the page when this happens. 
because it's submitting a form. Okay, so now it's working the way we want it to. Let's fix the styling so it matches the other application. Let's get rid of the width and we'll set the display to none. We'll change this to 100. And now, there we go. Let's get rid of the default tasks. Right here, we're gonna set dummy to do's to be an empty array. And let's comment this out for now. I don't know if we wanna reference it again for any reason. So now we want that conditional rendering, right? The way that this is going to work is we have this unordered list right here. We're gonna wrap this whole unordered list in curly braces. And we're going to basically say that we want to render it if, so in, in view, we use the logical operator like this. We're gonna use a ternary operator this time because we want to say tasks.length. So basically, if we have tasks, we want this to render. If we don't have tasks, we want something else to render, which in this instance is going to be h4, I think we used. I think that's what we did. And then what did we make this say? We made it say, okay. We made it say, please add a task. So let's just do the same thing. And yes, it was an H4. So let's paste that in there. Let's take a look. And what's the issue we're having now? Tasks is not defined. Is it because we're calling it to do's? Okay, to do's. Okay, please add a task. If we add a task, that goes away. So now we have the same functionality. The last thing we need is this button for being able to delete a task. So right after the span, let's add a button and we'll make it that red X again. There we go, X. And I think we had some styling for that, didn't we? Can I just steal the styling? And did we do inline? What did we do here? Oh no, I guess we didn't style it. Okay, that's fine. Let's save this. And then we'll add the functionality to the button in just a second. Oh, but we do need to add a margin there. So let's add a task. And then we'll give this, we'll put the margin on the button this time. So we'll say style equals, and then we'll just say margin. And we'll set the margin to be zero. Remember, we're going clockwise here. So the margin is going to be zero, zero, zero. And then the last one, which will be the left side of it, we're going to say two REM. And then this whole thing right here needs to be a string. So let's see if that does it for us. And it looks like it did. I think, didn't we round this? We rounded it last time. So yeah, there is some styling there somewhere. I just didn't catch it at a glance, I guess. Um, we're gonna round, make the edges round. We're gonna use border radius. Yeah, border radius. And let's also make this 0 0.5 REM. This needs to be a string. Now let's take a look. All right, that looks better. Uh, instead of making these all zero, let's just make them auto. All right, so far so good. Now, what do we want to happen when we click this? We don't want that to happen. You see how it's toggling. So where is that happening? We're doing toggle complete handler on the list item. We're going to move this to the span. So now when we click the button, it's not gonna change the styling, but when we click this, it does. So now the next thing that we're going to do here is we need to create something to delete this object. So let's say on click, we want it to say, delete, uh, we'll call it delete item, we'll call it delete, to do handler. We're gonna pass in the index here. And again, we don't want it to immediately invoke itself, so we're going to call it like this. And let's create this delete to do handler. Const delete to do handler equals, and then we might as well just do this in line. So we will say, oh no, let's not do it in line. That'll make it more complicated. 
we're going to say const t because we're going to create a copy of our to do's. Uh, const t equals, we'll say to do's. Okay, I'm sorry. Let me do this a little bit differently. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm overthinking this. It's really pretty simple. So we're creating a copy of our to do's. Then we're going to say t.splice. And we're going to take the index for the starting index. And we're going to get rid of one value. And then we're going to do set to do's. And we're going to set that to t. All right, so let's take a look and see if that works. Okay, so we have an error here. What is the error? I is not defined. And surely it isn't defined. Let's see if we added it down here. Oh, one more thing that's sort of interesting. You see how this E is a little bit dark? That's because by default, it will add that. We don't actually have to necessarily specify that. So if we delete it, it shouldn't cause any issues. Let's take a look. Let's actually make sure that that's the case. Let's try toggling a task. All right, and now let's try deleting a task. And everything's working exactly the way we want it to. So the last thing that I want to do here is we want to actually add a component so you can see how components work in React. We'll say new folder, we'll call this components. And just like we did with view, we're gonna make a to-do component. We'll call this to-dos, we'll call, it's our to-do list, so to-dos.jsx. And let's go ahead and just copy this in there. We're gonna take our to-dos.length All right, so we're gonna take everything right there. I'm gonna paste that into our to-dos, but we need to create the component first. And so we're returning the JSX. And this is going to have to be, let's make a React fragment again, because it needs a parent element. And then we save it, it adds our parentheses in there, but now we don't have to-dos. So we need to pass the to-dos into that component. Let's start by importing the component. So we'll do import to-dos from components slash to-dos. I don't think we need to specify the JSX. Um, now we're actually going to have to export it here. So what you can do is you can do export const and then you can import it like this. And that's a good thing to do if you have multiple components in one file, which really isn't a great idea. Sometimes I like using the syntax regardless, but a better way to go about it, something that's a little bit more um, semantically correct, I guess you would say, is instead of exporting it here, we'll create a default export. Okay, so we're exporting the to-dos. And let's add the button here, or I'm sorry, add the component, which is called to do's. And we're going to put that right here. And we can make this self closing. But now we have to pass our to do's into this element right here. Now the way that props work in react is like this. So in our to do's list, we're going to need children. And children is a reserved keyword in React. Um, so let's try this. Again, it's, it's been a little while for me, so forgive me if I'm doing something wrong. We'll catch it though. So we'll say children.todos.length. I feel like I'm missing something here. Okay, actually it seems to be working. What we can also do is we can, instead of calling children, uh, we should also be able to I can't remember if we can actually do this. Let's see. Let's see if we could just destructure to do's right there without specifying children. And it looks like it's working. All right. So what else do we need to do here? Because we have a lot of errors. If we try adding this, it appears to be working, but it feels like we're missing something. Let's try all of our, okay. So we need to, there's a few ways that we can do this. We can actually pass the 
we could pass all of these in as um, as props, like child props. But a better way to do it would actually be to put it in the component where it belongs. So let's take these and let's throw them in to do's. But there's something else that we need to be mindful of here. We're passing the values down as a prop and we don't want um, we don't want to modify the to do's across components, you know, from the child to the parent necessarily, because any changes that we make here, it's going to try to, to mutate to do's. Meanwhile, the state is living up here. So let's see what we're going to do about this. And like I mentioned earlier, we have another hook that we're going to talk about. So this will be pretty interesting. Let's do import. We're going to say use state and we're also going to import use effect. So from React, let's throw React in here for good measure. And this is a string. So um, what we're going to actually do here, and this I think this is pretty cool. This is one of the more complicated things to understand with React is the use effect hook. It's not all that complicated, but it definitely is a little bit less intuitive than use state. So use effect, this is going to be called once when the component loads, and then we can add dependencies in an array. And anytime one of those dependencies changes, we can make something happen. So let's do this. Let's say that we want to use effect. Let's just create sort of like the base syntax here. And then we'll add this dependency array. Now for state, let's set what we want the state to be. And I just realized I'm, I'm over complicating this. This is a very small application. We don't even need use effect. But again, I, I had to remind myself this isn't a React tutorial. We're just comparing the development experience. Let's get rid of this. We also don't need use state. This is a very, very small application. All we really need to do is to pass these values So it's delete to do handler and toggle complete handler. Let's paste them back in here. And then let's pass these values into the component. If it was a larger, more complicated application, we might use Redux to manage the state or something like that. Um, or we could sort of drill down into the functions that we want if we have parent child relationships. But for the sake of how small and simple this is, let's just add it in here. There's no reason we can't just do that. So we'll say delete to do handler equals delete to do handler. Toggle complete handler is going to be toggle complete handler. And then we need to destructure these child objects. And let's see where that leaves us. Okay, it appears to be working. Let's see if we can delete this. And everything's working exactly as expected. So these are our two applications that should give you a basic idea of the differences between React and Vue and what the development experience is like for both of them. So I know this hasn't been the, the cleanest video. I didn't really plan this out. I just kind of jumped into it head first, but hopefully this will give you uh, some perspective if you're wondering which one you should learn. If you're wondering what it's like to write React versus what it's like to write Vue, I use Vue at work every single day. I'm noticing that Vue is becoming more and more popular with each passing day. More companies are hiring for it. Um, but React and Vue, of the two of them, React is definitely a little bit more popular. But I think Vue has a lower barrier to entry. So if you're just getting started with web application development, single page applications, JavaScript, whatever the case is, Vue is just so much more like vanilla JavaScript with HTML and CSS. So that's what I would recommend if you're having trouble getting started with React. Other than that, I hope this helped you. Let me know in the comments if there's any other demonstrations or a tutorial or anything that you'd be interested in uh, seeing on this channel. And thanks for stopping by to watch.